Good day. We're going to be looking at this work features project and giving you a couple of tips on creating this particular object. Uh, one of the big things with this type of a drawing environment is that you want to lay out the locations of all the center points first. So it's not really clearly marked where all the center points are, but you've got a radius here, a radius here, a radius here, a radius here down in this end. And so each one of these has a uh, radius environment that you have to deal with when you're dealing with this layout. In addition, uh, we also need to know what the thickness is of the part, um, and that thickness will then provide the uh, information to help us offset these to get the right shape overall. Now, I'm not going to draw the whole object, but I'm going to give you a few pointers on what this object looks like and where it can go. So the first thing is, is I pick the sketch button and we'll go ahead and create a sketch and we'll pick the uh, XY planar face to get started uh, with that particular object. So once we pick the sketch surface, our sketch tools will then show up on our ribbon and we'll begin laying out this particular drawing. Now I'm going to plan this center point on the drawing sheet, uh, the large radius, whether it's this, the, uh, the radius 13 or the radius 16, either one is going to become my center point here. So first things first, what we're going to do is just draw some lines. One vertical, one horizontal, starting along the X and the Y axes. And that is going to become our starting point. So we'll draw one line along the X. Excuse me, one along the Y, one along the X, and they're probably too large, but that's okay. And from here, what we're going to do is use the offset tool and offset these particular lines. So we'll use this as the radius 13, 0, 0 position, and we'll offset this. So the first offset is, do we know any distances from that radius 13 location? And that's the big question, is where are the distances emanating from? Um, and so we look at the radius 13, and it's tangent to the radius 16, but it's based on the thickness of the object. Okay, so what is the thickness of the object? That's a good question. Looking at the drawing, they don't indicate what the thickness of the object is, so we're going to have to make a uh, valued judgment on this. Uh, typically, they'll have it as a separate note. They should have had it as a dimension, but when you look at all the dimensions across this shape, there are no dimensions that relate to the overall thickness of this part. So you can do a couple of things. Number one, we know that the width of this part is 12, half of it is 6, and we've got a 4 dimension here, and it's about 4 wide, 3 to 4 wide, um, and so we'll call it a 3 thickness, so a 3 millimeter thickness on this, um, only because using the deductive reasoning between the 4 and the 6, Thicknesses, it looks about half of the six, and four is pretty close, but it's a little bit wider than what needs to happen. Typically, you will know exactly what the distances are. Okay, and if it's not, then you need to make sure that you talk to another engineer, uh, get their input on it before you go forward. Just don't make the assumption and go forward. You always want to verify something like that with somebody else. All right, so we're going to go ahead and offset this. Now, to offset this, we know that it's 13 plus 16 is the distance, plus 3. Okay, so it's 19 plus 13, 32. So we're going to go ahead and offset it in our direction here. 
Uh, we happen to be in inches, so we probably should have started this in millimeters, which would have been a better option. So uh, before we get too far down the, uh, the process, we need to change our document setting to millimeters. So under document settings, you'll find the units of measurement. We want to edit that. The active units is going to be in millimeters, and we'll choose OK. And so now, thanks. So now, let me make sure I undo that. The distance we have here is 41. We need it at 32. So we'll type in 32. And so 13 plus 16, 29 plus 3, 32. So that's 32, and they're not on the same plane. There's also a height difference here, too. But we'll have to get to that here in just a second. Um, so that locates this one. Now, 56 units back locates the center of the 4 uh, radius here, or the radius of 13 here. So we can offset this line. I can offset the original line. Come on. Sometimes things don't always work this the way that you want them to. There we go. So we can offset this line. So again, doing the basic math here, um, we're going to need to offset at 24 units. So that's a negative 24. So again, all we're doing is getting the verticals located. And then we'll deal with the horizontal center points. So we've got a radius 8 here. So that's going to be 16 plus 8 plus 3. So that's 27 from here. So let's see. Boy, I hate when I do that. Um, let's undo. Make sure that we choose offset. So we have to offset the original. Working from that original, we can't offset the offset. So it's going to be 32 plus, what did I indicate there, 27, so 59. Okay, and it's always good to adjust your dimensions so that way they all uh, orient from there. Okay, so from our 56 location working on the back end it's 18 to the whole um, looks like it's going to be it's to there it's 136 units overall uh, what we're looking at here is we need to find either the front point or the end point and then work from that location also to get uh, a couple of offsets so we have that. So we are here on this offset with 8. However, there's no other, unless this is lined up, and can you assume that? Not really because it's not extended. So now we're going to need to make a determination of how to get from the 4, which the, uh, the radius 13 right here, we know that it's 18 back to this hole. Um, that's to the center line here. And let's take a second here and decipher this. So if we go to 18 here, 
and that's 32, but there's no distance between those two. This is where sometimes drawings do not provide enough information for you to create. And that becomes a problem. So we're going to have to assume that on this front radius 8, that the distance of 20 to the front. So instead of 59, it'll be 79 to the front. So we'll pick offset again. We'll offset this. The total is 79 to the front. And grab this and move that up. Or adjust it so where it can be seen. And then all the way from there back, it's 136. So 79 and 136. That's a negative 57. So we'll go ahead and offset here a negative 57. Okay, and so then that gives us the um, all the verticals. So now, a couple of things. And again, they don't provide enough information for all these positions. The radius 13, we don't know what the height is off of the bottom center line here. We do know that this center line is 24 units up from the bottom of the object. So if this was the bottom of the object, we would move up or offset 24 units. Okay, so move up 24 units, and that particular intersection location is going to be oh, this is not going to work well on that aspect. Let me undo. And as promised, always when things don't go as perfectly as expected, we go and we try to fix them and go back to the original. So we go up 24 units. That aligns to this move here. And so we have a radius of 16 at that location. So this intersection has a radius of 16 or a diameter of 32. Now, the 0, 0 point which we're saying is the very bottom of this shape. This has the back is a radius of 13 plus 3, so 16 up. Okay, so we can offset 16 up. So negative 16. And then right here, we can draw another circle. That is radius 13. Ah, diameter of 26. Perfect. As I indicated, this radius 13 circle here, we don't have a height distance. We'll have to adjust there. The same with this radius of 8. Um, we do know that it's 40 units to the top, so that's a good thing. So we can offset the 40 units. So we'll do an offset of negative 40. So that negative 40, uh, or the 40 units, gets us to the top front corner here. And we know that 20 units in, okay, so there's the top front corner right there. We use the extend tool and or extend Uh, modify, we can use the extend tool and extend this line out. So that's the top corner. That works well. We can also trim things that we know that we aren't going to use. So we can trim this back. 
So we know that this distance here is that's where the 8 radius is plus 3, so I'd come down 11 units. So 40 minus 11, 29, is where we need to offset to get that arc to be located. So now we know that here at 29 we have a radius of 8. 16 is the, and you can see that works out perfectly because there's our three units uh, of distance. And then we'll have, we'll work with offsetting these circles to get the other arcs located. So. The first thing is lay out all your center lines. And by the way, we can convert these to center lines just by right mouse clicking on each one and make it a normal center line. Um, this will be a center line. This one will be a center line. This one will be a center line. But you get the idea here that we're able to create these center line locations so that way those will not get generated into model geometry. Okay, so let's start here at the very front and start working our way back. So we know that um, from here we've got a three unit add to that radius. Of, so we got a radius of 19. So if we draw a circle from here with a radius of 19, okay. So we got 16 and then 19. And so we'll end up here. We started that, and that was 40. Okay, so what happened? So if that was 40, and this is 19. 16 plus 3, that should have intersected the 40. So this line might be off slightly. Nope, that's 29. That's 40. Oh, that should be 22. We have to double that. Like something wasn't right. We had to double that. So, um, so this actually is the uh, the distance that needed to be doubled. Because again, three units times two on both sides. All right. So 16, 22. That connects that to the front edge. If we were to now offset this line here, we can offset this down three units and then that gives us the front portion of our object. So now we have an arc that comes down that will connect to the next circle which is going to be here to there. Well, actually, it'll be uh, 32 plus 6 will be 38. So, um, something's not happy. Because these should align or connect. There should be a small straight line between these two. 
um, for the outer to touch here. So if there's a line from tangent locations, and that's the next constraint, what we can do is draw a line in and then make them tangent. So we're going to draw a line in here. Make it vertical. Ah, you can see where I drew a line and it touches both objects. So we trim the top and we trim the bottom and we trim the bottom and you can see where that line now touches. Same thing will have to be done here or we can offset this six units which actually is probably the easiest thing to do is just offset this. Negative six. Oh, that's too far. It'd be negative three. Okay. And what that does is that connects the other two. So cleaning this up, we can now trim this arc, this arc, this arc, trim this arc, Trim this arc. So now you can see how this arc is now being created. We got a straight line in here. So you can see as we trim these, continue to trim these away, we're now getting the shape that we want. We now have straight line to arc, to arc, and then we build the next one the same way. So that that's the first one. Now we work on the second one. So it'd be 26. We'd add another circle at 32. Um, actually, we have another arc here, but we didn't know what the height was. That was the kicker, is that we don't know that the height, what the height is. So that's where this other radius of 13 comes into play. We need to, uh, unfortunately, this is a tangent line. That angle is a line that's tangent, and we'll show you how to draw that here. So 13, we don't know what this distance is between the bottom and this 13. We can surmise if that's 24, this looks like about 10 or 12, or 8 maybe. So we'll just call it 8. We'll see what happens here. This is going to be a negative 8. Okay, this line here now is going to become a construction line or a center line. And so now we have to draw a circle from this location. And that's going to be 26 and 32. Okay, so now these two should have connected, which means that the 8 was too small because these two should come down and connect at a certain point. So let's try negative 12. That's better, but we're not there. We might actually have to go negative uh, 14. Negative 18. All right, we're pretty close here. But the idea is that we've, we come down, and then these have to be tangent going up and over. So we've got to go up. Basically, it's going to be equal to this 38. That's the only option, but that isn't right. That is what's throwing me here. Because this has to be lower. Let's trim this up here. If I trim this to here. That gets rid of that upper part. 
that can trim away. All right, so this comes down. Yeah, this comes across and down. Then it comes back up. So unless this has to get shifted over. Hmm. You know, if this got shifted over, then that would throw everything off. But if this got shifted over, like that, okay, this distance being slightly off. But if that got shifted over, you can see now where it's tangent. And if we were to trim these, it would clean itself up. So this would come up, this would trim out, this would trim away. So now you can see how it connects here, and it's tangent, so it goes from there, tangent to here. Now the next one, that's where we went wrong. Yeah, because this shouldn't have been here, so we'll, we'll delete these. So this one comes down to the radius 13, and that is basically 13 plus 3, so it's 16 up. So if that's 16 up, and that's the distance 32 in, what's this distance from here to here? Ooh, that's 33. But if that comes down 16, yeah, that could work. So we'll just do this. So we'll draw the circle, 16. No, that's not going to work. Because that's a radius 13. Which would be 26 and 32. But for us to get the tangency, see 16 would be too high. Hmm. So the dilemma is I've got a tangent line that's got to meet here. And that's 18 over, 32 back. We're going to call that even to 32. And so 32, I shifted this by one unit to make this all work here. This, um, line shift it over would work. So somewhere something went awry here. But if we did this, that's at 32. This is at 26. Now if we were to draw a line, because this is what I wanted to show you, is that we need to draw a line basically that's tangent from here to here. This needs to be a diagonal. So what we're going to do is just draw a long line, not worry about the tangency. Then I can select the tangent constraint tools. There's a tangent constraint tool right here. And if I say I want this line to be tangent to this arc, that moves it. And I want this line to be tangent to this arc. And it adjusts the angle of that so it's appropriate. So let's try that again. I'm just going to draw a line in at an angle. doesn't matter what the angle is. Choose OK. Use the use this constraint of tangent. Pick the line. Pick the arc. Pick the line. Pick the arc. And what that does is that guarantees that it now is tangent. And if we were to trim these up, and again, zoom in so you get all the trim appropriately done. It's 
Make sure that everything is trimmed back and out of the way. right there. So magnifying and demagnifying is your friend on this to make sure that you get all those little extra pieces out of the way. But now you can see how we've started here. We created this arc to this arc. Now a tangent line connected those two arcs and then this would be drawn uh, more or less straight from here to the outer edge and then up three and then back. And so what that allows us to do is now put a dimension in here between this point and this point. Make that three. That brings the line in straight. We can now trim the rest away. And as you can see what I do is I nibble away all the way around just to make it easy. And so we select and nibble our way around. And so now we've got the shape of the part. Now it's not done. We still have to put, I think this, this, this middle hump is still too high. But nonetheless, this gives you the process, if you have all the dimensions, to create the, uh, the object itself. So that's basically how this works. To create the slots or the holes, you'd want to put a work plane on this. So in essence, that'll finish the sketch. We'll extrude our shape. I'm just picking all the segments of the shape. Oh, we've got an extra line there. That's going to be a problem. Let's delete that. That could be why it wasn't real happy. Seventeen selected. It's still not happy. Oh, because so I got to trim these up. So I need to go back to the original sketch, and I can double-click on the sketch. I still have some lines in here, right here, on the outer edges that needed to get trimmed up. Good. Oh, there's this line here. So there's some extra leftover lines that we had. As you can see, as I'm trimming them, you can see these blue areas are going away. So I'm just going to trim up these center lines because there might be some regular lines hidden for some of these center lines here. So now if I pick this line and just delete it, so now you can see that as I've gotten rid of these center lines, it's actually made it a little bit easier. Oh, there's an extra line on the bottom there. So I've gotten rid of those lines. You can see now it's highlighting 
everything and I'm still aligning here too. How did I know that? Because if you notice when I was highlighting it, it was not highlighting a full piece all the way across. So now you can see that there's no extra lines in it. Finish the sketch, extrude it. We'll just say it's going to be extruded. The width here is what, 12? And so what's happened is that we're able now go up to our view cube, change the angle, you can see the object shape. So ultimately, the last step that we have to do is when we cut out these slots or these holes, we want to create a work surface. So we want to create a work plane. And we can pick this object and make this a work plane all the way across and accept that. And once we have a work plane, we can then create a sketch, put the sketch on the work, work plane surface, and now if I need to create a slot, you know, I can just create a slot there, I can put the holes in here, now again, measurement is key. I'm just doing this on the fly to speed the process up, but ultimately I can have features finish the sketch, and now I can extrude these. Let's go back to the home view. I can now extrude these and cut them. Watch what will happen. I can take this and drag this down to cut it, and take this and cut that also. And when I cut them, now when we take a look at it, you can see how it cuts straight down through the part, which is what this is representing on the, uh, the drawing. So there you have it. A little bit longer video than I expected. We had some hiccups along the way. As always, I don't edit these out uh, to show you how to fix them. But ultimately, this is the process. This particular drawing is in need of some help because it does not have all the dimensions that you need to complete the project. So have a great day, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye.